I was born in Taiwan, and I immigrated to the United States when I was nine years old. I'm married, and I'm the father of two young children. I'm a philosopher and an ethicist. These are some core facts about me. If I certainly lose access to these facts, for example, if I certainly do not remember these facts, I would lose certain core aspects of myself. That is, certain core aspects of my identity. We're on the cusp of developing a certain kind of technology, neural technology, that can give us an unprecedented ability to peer into our mind and to influence specific neural processes. Neural technologies such as functional magnetic resonance imaging (fMRI), deep brain stimulation, and psychopharmaceuticals have the potential to alter what we remember and forget, what we think and believe, and what we feel and perceive. They can thus radically change our sense of where we come from, what we do, and importantly, who we are. These new neural technologies raise a number of controversial issues, highly controversial issues. In my role as an ethicist, I think about these controversial issues. I study and explore them in relation to basic human values such as right to life and right to health. I may even make recommendations of right and wrong conduct. So let's look at these technologies from where I stand. Most obviously. People will be concerned that these technologies may be used to harm other people, but we should also be aware that these technologies could harm ourselves in subtle ways, and that's what I want to explore today through a couple of scenarios. A 10-year-old whose rapist was sentenced to 10 to 15 years in jail in Florida in 2014 told the court, "I wish I could forget." And have a new brain, so I don't remember. I wish I could forget. It's a haunting phrase that comes up again and again in the testimony of those who have suffered or witnessed terrible crimes. Likewise, the burden of traumatic memory weighs heavily on returning soldiers, many of whom suffer flashbacks as a symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD). Increasingly, though, scientists are uncovering new ways of manipulating memories. For example, a research team at the SUNY Downstate Medical Center found that increasing the enzyme level of PKM zeta, this is a molecule thought to be needed for strengthening the connections between brain cells, can enhance a rodent's ability to remember, while blocking that enzyme resulted in the erasure of particular memories. Another research team at the Scripps Research Institute in Florida found that when the drug latriculin A was injected into a rodent's amygdala, certain memories could be selectively erased, while others were kept intact. Using optogenetics, this is a technique that uses light to manipulate nerve cells that have been sensitized to light. A team at、I、MIT found that certain unpleasant memories in rodents. Can be neutralized or even reassociated with positive emotions. Such research, therefore, raises hope that we can one day treat something like PTSD. It's possible that within the next decade, we'll be able to develop memory modification technologies, or MMTs. Now, forgetting is, of course, an important and ordinary part of life. Indeed, even self-deception may be important for maintaining our psychological stability. Just imagine if we really saw ourselves as others saw us. So, how could MMTs harm us in subtle ways? Memories are evidence for events that have taken place. Modifying our memories, therefore, could affect what we believe to be true about certain events and cause us to live in falsehood. Imagine a soldier who uses MMTs and, as a result, no longer remembers what he did during the war. How would he feel if he were to to be presented with evidence of his behavior during the war, especially if that evidence conflicted with the identity that he has now created for himself? The use of MMTs may also affect our ability to respond as moral agents. If a friend betrays you. 
the appropriate moral reaction is to feel indignation. But if you use MMTs to weaken your memory of your friend's betrayal, isn't there a risk that you would forgive your friend too easily? Forgiveness is an important moral reaction that requires us to overcome our indignation for the sake of our moral values. A failure to feel such emotions can preclude genuine forgiveness. We may also have moral and legal obligations to remember certain events. For example, Neil Armstrong's memory of landing on the moon may not just be evidence for him, but also be for the rest of us. Or suppose you witnessed a traumatic car accident, you may be required to bear witness despite the trauma the memories may cause you. Would the use of MMTs then prevent us from meeting our obligations to ourselves and to others? For motive, most of us, the point of using MMTs will be to enhance our own personal well-being. People should be at liberty to use such technologies as long as they don't use them to harm others. But given that inappropriate use of MMTs can cause us to live in falsehood, affect our ability to respond as moral agents, and possibly prevent us from meeting our obligations, the correct application of MMTs will also require that we understand what a good life for us is and the role of certain memories in our lives. Let's look at another scenario. War veterans are returning from combat with PTSD. Many can't live normal lives. At least 22 veterans commit suicide each day. In the U.S., DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is spending over $70 million in the next five years to come up with novel devices that would treat conditions such as PTSD. DARPA is interested in something called deep brain stimulation, DBS. DBS involves inserting an electrode into the brain. The electrode is then connected to a battery pack. The battery pack then sends electrical signals to the brain. About 100,000 people around the world today have such a DBS implant for Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, and major depression. There's evidence that DBS can also be used to treat conditions such as PTSD. Brain imaging shows that amygdala hyperactivity is responsible for the symptoms of PTSD and that DBS can functionally reduce the activities of the amygdala. DAPA is particularly interested in next-generation devices that do not require user input, and that can read and monitor the brain's activities in real time and intervene in these activities automatically. Call these DBS+. Plus. DAPA's aim is, of course, to treat soldiers. The issue is that once DBS Plus is created, it could be used to enhance soldiers. For example, it could be used to preempt PTSD. Im imagine a soldier who's just experienced a potentially traumatic event. DBS could be used to detect and categorize the emotional reactions of the amygdala. Like hurricane warnings, there could be different categories. If DBS Plus detected a category four reaction, they would reduce the amygdala to a certain degree automatically. And if it detected a Category 5 reaction, then it would slow the amygdala to a halt. DBS Plus could also be used to reduce fear by automatically increasing adrenaline in a soldier. This would be like the way some soldiers now take drugs such as amphetamine before they go into battle. So what are some of the ethical issues surrounding the use of DBS Plus? Well, will soldiers be coerced into using such devices? The military command structure is hierarchical. What about peer pressure? Would, so, would a soldier get such an implant because other soldiers are getting them? Or maybe the pressure to succeed in the military is overwhelming. After all, Soldiers with such implants may be more reliable soldiers. So can we ban DBS Plus the way we ban doping in sports? It's not clear that we can. 
The point of banning doping in sports is to ensure fairness. But do soldiers care about fairness? Would they voluntarily give up Apache helicopters and night vision goggles just to level the playing field? In fact, soldiers may actively seek to have DBS Plus precisely because it confers combat advantage. Will the use of uh, DBS Plus lead to soldiers without conscience? This is a serious concern. But interestingly, it may be a technical problem. Brain implants that remove our morality are not really enhancements as such, and therefore are not really desirable. But what if we can have implants that can enable soldiers to kill appropriately at the right time, for the right reasons, and in a proportionate manner? Will we still have ethical issues with soldiers using such a technology? At this point, it's worth recognizing that our identities are actually amazingly fluid and inconsistent. Psychological studies have shown that many of our memories are actually inaccurate in many details, or even outright false. And let's not forget that neural technologies are currently being developed in part in order to treat conditions such as PTSD, where pain can be unbearable. Let's, let's take, take a look at another example. Sophie's Choice, from a novel by William Styron. In the concentration camp, Sophie was forced to make a decision of whether to save her son or her daughter. She chose her son, and in the end, her feelings of guilt became so unbearable that she committed suicide. In Sophie's case, and in other cases like it, where pain is unbearable, it seems permissible to use neural technologies to help us forget, even if doing so may alter our identities in other ways. Therefore, it does not have to be morally problematic to use neural technologies to shape our identities. While we should be cautious when developing these technologies, we should also embrace the potential that these technologies can have in enhancing and transforming our lives. Thank you.